High five, we're number one. Welcome to day three of SportsStream. I'm your host, Gary Batan. Boy, I got to tell you, I can't believe how successful this show has been, the amount of viewership we've gotten, the questions we've got from people viewing it, and the amount of content we produce. We've done, put out over six hours worth of content over the last two days, including today. We'll get close to nine or ten hours worth of content, all focused on creating the best possible sporting sports video productions that you can as a producer, as a video tech, as a college, as a school, as a university, as a high school, as an independent sport league, as someone who runs a sports facility. It's all about streaming sports and streaming sports live, and we've just got some great stuff. So let's, so you know, uh, on the 10th, we did getting started in live production. That was more the, the basic stuff for an easy shoot independent. How to elevate your sports video with broadcast production was yesterday. Then today, remote production workflows, increased opportunities for sports coverage. We're going to get into some higher end stuff, and we're real excited. You know, let's talk about all the people we had on. Thanks for bringing that over there for me. But I want to review the three days we got through first, if that's okay. So if we can pull that up full stream, day one. And remember, all these streams are available for you to review at sportsstream.us. So day one, getting started, JVC Sports product workflows. 1210 production company did a great, you know, user story. Canon had, had their, went over their cameras with a demo. And then Future Grade spotlight on another uh, dealer with a user success story. Yesterday, elevate your production. We had uh, VizRT on sports workflows. Uh, Midtown Video, thank you so much, Jesse. PTC Optics Cameras and Hive. And uh, the Sports Stream Q&A, just so much. And then Thursday, uh, Thursday today, Remy Production and Trends, Panasonic Kairos Workflows, Live U Sports, Visua with uh, Virtual uh, Gear, more Bird Dog News. It's a wrap with a Q&A to, to, to end it at the end of the day, which will be three-ish, depending on how, how long the rest of this stuff go. But by all means, stick around for that. It's going to be so much fun. We're really looking forward to it. It's really been, I, I just got to say thank you. Thank you, thank you to all of the product specialists we've had on the show from the companies we deal with. All the guys were great. I think the interviews were fantastic. I think each of them had some phenomenal nuggets that were very valuable for you as video content producers, sports producers. And also we had some tech tips in some of those shows and just some general ideas on where it's going. Today's call, today's interviews are just gonna be that much better. Gotta thank the SI Spotlights for these user studies. These were really phenomenal. We had Matt Baker from Visua, Brad, I'm going to get this wrong, so I'm going to say Jigelski from 1210, Jesse Miller from Midtown, and Austin James Smith from Future Grade Technologies. You know, one of the things that I think really separates the programming we're doing for you with the sports stream is that we're not just giving you information from the vendors trying to pitch products. I think you've seen most of the vendor interviews and the spotlights have been on how their products are used for sports, what makes them unique why they're the right solution for the right type of event and what you can do with them. And our user studies, which is really great. I got to thank all four of our SI partners for coming through for us because that I think is some of the most valuable content of the sports stream. I know when I hear about technology from a vendor, I go to a trade show. I, I love li listening to that stuff, but I always like, but what's it, how's it work in the real world? And now you really heard from people who are using it in the real world, in real situations, producing real games and real events. So great job by everyone. I'm going to dive into a little bit of a, a takeaways from what we've learned the first couple of days. Uh, uh, key takeaways, you know, what is sports production? Broadcasting to your audience at home. In venue is also very important for fan engagement. Just that's what everyone's doing now. And post-production with, you know, analysis and studio broadcasters and interviews with, you, you know, the, uh, the, the, the color commentary and things like that. What did we learn? We learned that resolution and frame rates really matter. If you're putting in cameras, stretch your budget, make sure you put in 4K P60, you get the best kind of color, you get the best kind of view of your show, and you're with the 60 frames, you're gonna be able to get slow motion going. I really recommend you also look for 4K UDR, UHD, that's where you have the increased color space where you can really think, make things pop, as I've discussed in several of my interviews with several of our PTT camera vendors, 4K looks great. 
HD look great, and then we got 4K, but a lot of people, especially people my age, can't really tell the difference between a 4K and an HD signal on a television. But when you add UHD, and all of a sudden you get that additional level of color clarity, all of a sudden the blades of grass pop, you see the sweat on the guy's arm, you start to see you know a more vibrant image, and it looks clearer and better. In fact, back before COVID, when we were first finding out and learning about UHD, one of the tests that a lot of our vendors did was, hey, look at this UHD with HDR versus 4K without it. And most people, especially people over 40, like the UHD better. So once again, you know, I got to wear these glasses. Resolution is a problem for me. When it's color, it looks that much better. So by all means, 4K P60. Next thing we learned, the more cameras, the more better. No matter how many cameras you're shooting with your sport with, you will reach a point where you'll say, I wish I had more cameras. I wish I had this angle. I wish I could get the top view of the whole thing. I wish I had a close-up angle that I could get down on the field level or what have you. Those cameras can be live cameras with people. They can be PTZ cameras. You can also use Z cameras that just zoom in but have a fixed position. They don't pan and tilt. And theirs are also very useful for doing some uh, talent stuff. You know, there's talent who produces the game. You might have announcers. You might have color commentary. You might want to have your coach talking to people. So there's the action that happens in the game. And there's all the stuff and knowledge that comes around the game as well, between plays with interviews and stuff like that. So the more cameras, the better. And by all means, mix and match PTZ with handheld cameras. It works great. Next, I want to talk about, this is a big thing with me. And if you've seen shows that I've done before, I always talk about the Spinal Tap thing, you know, take things to 11. And I really feel that when you're shooting sports, the number one thing that you could do to take your sport to 11 is to add better graphics. Look at the graphics we have coming up. You can bring in stats and stuff like that. You bring graphics from your scoreboard. Once you take your, your, your production to 15, well, that's when you add instant replay. When you've got instant replay, you've separated yourself from a typical production. And the best instant replays aren't a single camera instant replay, but it's multiple cameras functioning the instant replay. So during the instant replay, you have the best possible angle of the play that you're showing, and then you can slow it down to slow motion with the P60 frame rate. Just makes it look that much better. And then what can you do to take your, your, your event even higher? You can start doing stuff like advanced graphics and uh, analytics, where you know you can have one of the players have a circle on them or have them be highlighted or start showing analytics, like how far the ball went or how, how what the, was the hang time on the kick or just how fast the receiver ran down the field to catch it. Those analytics can come from different programs and third party things but you could also have the analytics that you're planning on using yourself for your show, and it just makes your show that much different, that much better than everyone else's. Now, one of the things that happens with sports, and I can't stress this, uh, this enough, and that is, is practice, 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 rehearse, rehearse, rehearse. I have a general theory with streaming of any event, any show, that it takes your fourth show to get it right, your first three, one of them's probably your first one's going to be a disaster. One of the next two is going to go well. One of the next two isn't by the fourth one. You really get in the flow with what you're doing. And anytime you upgrade your, your, your equipment substantially, be prepared to run that rule again when you get another four shows to get it right. But the more you rehearse, the more you practice, the better your production is going to be. So deploy your camera operators and in your encoders and make sure they're working before the game. Test things constantly. Add PTZ and robotic cameras because it's easier to add a PTZ camera than necessarily a cameraman, which can have costs for you if you're a professional league or if you're a school dealing with volunteers. It's just getting all the kids there at the same time. Have a producer, so a producer, a director, someone who's actually running the whole show, tying everyone together, someone who can do uh, the bring in your uh, graphics remotely or your instant replay. And the, the, the cherry on top that we're going to go into today's show is, is expand production shows with remote operators and managers. And that means that you can have your studio back at the home field where your game is, high school, college, whatever, but you can send a team of cameramen who can go to the game, the away game, and actually bring those signals back in and be able to produce the show from home. It's called Remy Barclays. You can hear a lot about that later today on our show. So that's where we are now, the future of sports production. That's what today's show is going to face shows are going to be and we have several things coming up here but we're going to talk about remy workflows which allow you to produce your event anywhere 
to have to manage multiple events at the same time or concurrently from a central studio and how to cover more events to expand your business. Now, we're showing you today, we're gonna have Live View Studio. We talked to Paul uh, with the Hive. We have the Kairos guys coming on, which is a great little tool that could be working in venue and out of venue. We have the NDI 6 Bridge. We'd even talk about it, but we have Bird Dog has their cloud. And a lot of the products we have have uh, a Remy or remote or cloud-based uh, addition to their solutions. That's where the industry is going. So I just want to take a few seconds before we dive into some of these interviews and just say, Remy and remote and cloud get confused and intermix, but they're not the same thing. So by Remy or remote, what we're doing is we're actually controlling the event from afar and then sending the signal back home to the studio. Now it may bounce through a cloud or not, but it's not being produced in the cloud where other workflows actually have the camera signals going up to the cloud, the control going up to the cloud and everyone's producing it remotely. They're not unique. You could have a remote workflow that has cloud components or you could have a cloud workflow that has remote components, but it's a real way that you can scale and grow your show. And I'm not saying you have to be there today, but I'm definitely gonna say if you're already doing video production with sports, you wanna start experimenting and playing with this because this is how you're gonna take your productions to the next level by going remote and integrating cloud. Not all, but integrating it and starting to use it and learn it. So as things change over time, you're ready and you're there and you're capable and you've built capacity, not just for the technology you own, but the people who are actually running and producing the show. What makes all this possible? And I'm gonna get into my kind of computer IT geeky hat on now. AVI over IP, you know, in the world where I grew up, you know, we had, if you watched a football game, you'd see a guy running along the sideline, just moving the cables back and forth. So when the cameraman moved, the cables moved with him. Now everything's done is digitized. And not only is it digitized, it can be run over ethernet cables. It's going over Wi-Fi. It's going over uh, uh, wireless networks using other technologies. Any source can be available for every producer. You can manage sources. Your, your same video clips can be used for in-house, out-of-house, OTT, streaming, streaming to phones, streaming to devices, or putting it on signage within the venue. And most of all, when it's AV over IP, it's a single cable. If you can run network cabling, you're there. You have a PoE over the cabling, which means if you have a PoE switch that's plugged in and you connect four or five cameras with Ethernet, even if it's outdoors, it's low voltage, it's PoE, those cameras are going to have their power from the switch. Very cool thing. We have people who are doing that. You can run these. You, you can run networking cable hundreds of feet with no problem anywhere. So with AV over IP, you can put video anywhere, inside or outside the venue. So we're a big fan of that. And we've been doing NDI. NDI is what you've heard from us for five or six years. There's a new term now called ST2110. And that's basically the broadcast version of NDI. I'm going to oversimplify this dramatically for you old timers to get an understanding of this. Think of NDI being more like HDMI as an easy, convenient hookup that can be used by consumers, prosumers, and broadcasts, where, S, where ST2110 is more like SDI. That's, that's when you know you're really into the more high-level, broadcast-level production. And of course, you can mix and match as needed. It's not all one, all the other. It's not all SDI, all HDMI, and it's certainly not all NDI or ST2110, you can mix all four to the, the two baseband and the two IP, grow as you need, expand your sports production universe as your budget and as your talent. And, and I'm, by talent, I don't mean the talent of the players on the team, I mean your production talent grows. And the other thing that's really cool over an AV over IP workflow for sports is you can scale up your production in a hurry to just add what you need for a short time while really maintaining your general workflow. What I mean by that, let's say your team makes the playoffs and now all of a sudden you got to produce better video. It's going to go to the OTT or the local uh, television station wants to pick up. Or maybe YouTube, you're going to show your games on YouTube, but you didn't show them live, or you're going to feed somewhere else. That's the great thing about AV over IT. Since everything's digital, you can send it wherever you want to send it. I guess I should have shown this slide while I was talking, but sometimes I get so excited about what I'm talking about that I forget that I have a slideshow that runs with it. So, you know, we're, expandability, scalability is a term we use like in the business world and in the IT world. What it basically means is you're future-proofing your production. Your production is grow as you grow. If your team gets more successful, 
you can grow your production. If your team makes the playoffs, you can grow your production. Or if you just have more kids showing up for your TV production program as a school, you can expand it then. One of the things I want to stress is the people producing this show right now with our TriCaster over there, Adam and James, they know these products cold. And you can call them at the 800 number we showed you before. I was too busy talking, not talking, but they'll give you the tech advice you need. They'll help you with the whole stuff. You can call us there. And if you really need a local person who can come in and install the equipment and train you, we have a network of dealers through Broadfield Distributing that can easily come and help you get the exact equipment you need put it in, install it, and train you, and service it and support it over time as well. So I was going to try to keep today's show to 15 minutes, and I actually achieved it, which is very rare for me because I usually don't shut up. But now we're going to do, this is an interview I had to do uh, yesterday with Peyton Thomas from Kairos, and that was because the whole gang at Kairos is actually at the IBC show in Europe, and he made himself available to do the show for us. So we're going to roll that video. I think we have a couple of commercials or something we're going to play. Then we're going to roll that video. Then I'm going to turn the show over to James, who's going to run the show during the day. And then at the end of the day, we're going to have a little uh, Q&A session with me, myself, James, and Jim, where we're going to take some of the questions we got from you guys over the course of the show and boil them down. Some people ask the same questions and give you our top, you know, four or five Q&A questions and how we're going to answer them. And, talk about the show. So thank you so much for signing up day three of uh, Sports Stream, and I I'm out of here. Gary Batan, your host, and uh, going to turn it over to the rest of the team for more great content and uh, be prepared because I think it's going to go today till probably the Q&A probably won't happen until 3 or 3.15. So thank you so much, guys. Stick around, watch it all, and Sports Stream, we're number one.